It's not easy to take the temperature of the UK housing market. For starters, the average house price is pretty useless in a market that varies from parish to parish. What's happening in Mayfair isn't that relevant or connected to what's happening in Mid Wales. Each of the monthly indices measures a slightly different basket of properties and at different times in the selling process, so it's usually best to look at the trend of each rather than absolute amounts. Some surveys are just a collection of gut instincts, which, whilst interesting to those curious about market sentiment, don't actually tell you how saleable or lettable your own property might be. Remember too that nobody would instruct a depressed estate agent. No one wants to borrow money from a mortgage lender who mumbles as you're signing the application form that their analysts think interest rates are about to quadruple. Next time you read or hear something about the housing market, look at who is being quoted. One of the reasons I get the absurd amount of airtime I'm given is because if I observe that the market is tougher or that prices are sliding, my mobile doesn't melt under the volume of emails from disgruntled clients as I walk out of the studio. The latest updates are in, and we get a flavour of what's happening to asking prices, sale prices, and to transaction volumes. Rightmove records the asking price of new listings over the previous month, over a hundred thousand each time. But they include the fifty percent of homes that don't sell. I regard asking prices as an indication of the owner's greed or of the estate agent's enthusiasm to get the business. So an average of this optimism, half of which is irrelevant since it doesn't actually sell, isn't a guide to values, whatever some newspapers might tell you. Average asking prices are 26 percent or £80,000 higher than average sale or deal prices. Right move record average asking prices across the UK pretty much unchanged last month at 1.1% over the past year, which is still 33% higher than their pre-credit crunch high reached in April 2008. The Office of National Statistics recorded average sale prices 4.2% higher than a year ago and 18% above their peak in September 2007. In London, they've fallen back as I predicted, and in Northern Ireland they're still just half what they were a decade ago. But there is still a market. 100,000 homes sold last month according to both HMRC and the ONS, smack on the long-term average. However, as with prices, there are some big regional differences with transaction volumes in London down by as much as 25% on the year before. Looking at the raw data, the fall in sales in the capital has been a trend over the past four years. London home prices, which have doubled over the last decade, will probably fall over the next three years, according to a survey of seven eminent economists by Bloomberg News. Values will decline by up to 10% over the period, according to five of the respondents. Two said that they would remain unchanged, and none of those who replied foresaw gains. The results tally with research by HomeTrack, a valuer used by 17 of the top 20 UK lenders, which expects house prices to fall further over the next 24 months as affordability and economic and political uncertainty stemming from Brexit weigh on demand. Research by the BBC Business Unit has looked at the rise of £1 million plus sales over the country. Over 16,000 property sales for a million pounds or more were completed last year, up 5.4% from the previous high in 2016. The rise in the number of expensive homes has been most dramatically seen in East Anglia, a great time to have been an estate agent there. But where might things go from here? Well, clearly, selling today is much harder than buying something. I expect this trend to continue through the second half of the year, with the market stiffening in Q4 this year and Q1 next year, ahead of our actual divorce from Europe on March 29th. There may be nothing to worry about, but how many people are going to make what for most will be their most expensive purchase ahead of Brexit and not feel that they may be better off to put it off until June? Death, debt and divorce will continue to drive the supply side in the meantime, so anyone brave enough to buy later this year, I think, will find they have the market to themselves. According to estate agents, last month the average estate agency office had 309 buyers registered, 40 homes for sale, but sold just 8. They admit that 86% sold for less than the asking price. If you put your house on the market today, then statistically you have a 13% chance of selling it in the next month and just a 45% chance if you leave it on the market for the next year. That's how hard this market is.
If you're looking to sell, then get a good agent and reward them if they do what you ask of them. If you're buying too, then remember that all that really matters is the gap between what you sell for and what you have to pay for the next home. If you take 10% less on your sale, you ought to be able to negotiate 10% off you want to buy. If you can't, then perhaps you might consider the services of a buying agent.